Hello and thank you for watching this presentation. In this presentation, I will talk about the method for horizontal calibration of a laser projection transnasal fiber optic high speed video endoscopy system. Images are an important tool for doing clinical evaluation and also basic science research. We can use images for direct observation and studying of the phonetary mechanism. We can use them for functional assessment of the phonetary mechanism. We can use them for determining the etiology of the voice disorder and also the type of a lesion. And we can use them for evaluating an intervention outcome. At the same time, if you are able to make measurements from the images, we can, for example, compare the size of a lesion pre and post therapy and compare them. So that could advance evidence based practice in the field. Also, we can use measurement for studying developmental aspects of the vocal fold and also kinematic and biomechanics of the vocal fold. Additionally, if you are able to make measurements from vocal folds, we can create computational models that could help us to advance uh, personalized medicine in the field. In order to do horizontal measurement from images, first we need to find the confounding factors and then we need to account for them. So here is a simple experiment. Basically, we are provided with these two images and we are tasked to determine which range is taller. By looking at the images, we would say that this range is taller. However, if now this image is provided with us and basically we are told that this is the same setting, but these images were taken at two different working distances, and then we are asked to determine which range is taller, then we would change our answer to this one. So based on this small experiment, we could say that size in the image always depends on the working distance. So working distance is a confounding factor for horizontal measurement. Also, we cannot compare size of objects from different images, but we can compare size of multiple objects in the same image. And if we want to compare size of multiple objects from different images, we need some extra information. So now we want to talk about a different confounding factors. So we are provided with a map of a board and we are asked to determine if Greenland is larger or Brazil. So by looking at the image, we will say that Greenland is uh, several times bigger than Brazil. However, when we compare their actual area, we will see that Brazil is several times bigger than Greenland. So why is this happening? So specifically, why in previous slide, when we were looking at, at ranches that were in just in a single image, we were able to compare their size with each other, but not here. So the short answer is that this image has a nonlinear distortion. Basically, the region that are in, around the center of the image, around the equator, they seem smaller, and the regions that are toward both poles, they appear larger. So the goal of this study is to, per, to perform horizontal absolute unit measurement in millimeter. That would allow us to, for example, to to measure size of a lesion on laryngeal images. So the aim of this study is to develop the horizontal calibration method for a laser projection flexible endoscope, and then to quantify its subsequent horizontal measurement errors. So for this study, we used a laser calibrated transnasal fiber optic endoscope that was connected to a high-speed camera. And then we use a setup with adjustable working distance. Basically, this arm could go up and down, and that would change the distance between the endoscope and the target surface. And we collected a set of benchtop recording from grid papers at multiple working distances. To perform horizontal measurement, we need to determine the equivalent millimeter size of a pixel. In order to find that, we measured the size of the field of view in millimeter using benchtop recording and then divided that with the size of the field of view in the pixel. And this figure is showing the result of millimeter size of a pixel for different working distances. Basically, we see it is, it is like a linear line. And as working distance increases, the pixel size also increases. A spatial location of the object is another confounding factor that we need to account for. 
In flexible endoscope, we use wide angle lens, and wide angle lens introduce nonlinear distortion into the images. We have done a separate study on the effect of nonlinear distortion, and we are presenting that res result of that study in this virtual venue. So if you are interested, you can go to that other presentation. But this figure is showing some of that result. Basically, when we are at the center of the image, size of the pixel is minimum. But as we move toward the periphery of the image, size of the pixel increases. So this means that if an object is in the center of the image, it will produce a bigger image. However, if that object moves toward the periphery, the same object will produce a smaller image. Another point from this, from this analysis is that there is a symmetry for the distortion. Points with similar distance from the center, they have equal pixel sizes. So we can use this, this characteristic of the distortion and use circular grids for doing horizontal calibration. The proposed calibration approach is based on circular grids. So we created a set of circles that had the same center and the distance between consecutive circle was a fixed number, let's say one millimeter. We recorded this grid from multiple working distances and then we segmented all of those circles in the image. So by looking at this image, we see as we move from the center toward the periphery, the distance between consecutive circles is decreasing. This clearly is showing the effect of nonlinear distortion that we were talking about in previous slide. At the same time, if we compare this image with this second image, we see as the working distance increases, the distance between the two smallest circles is decreasing. And this is the effect of working distance on the image. So we, we created a model based on the working distance and radius of all of these circles in pixels. And the model would take these two input and then gives us the equivalent radius of that circle in millimeter. In order to do horizontal measurements, we need to determine the distance between the object and tip of endoscope. And this simulation is showing the main principle behind that. So basically there are two set of points here. The red points denote the position of the laser point if the surface was a flat one, and the green points are showing the actual position of the laser point as the surface is deforming. So we see as, the, as this surface is changing its distance and as it is deforming, position of these laser points is changing. And basically we can use that information for estimating of the distance between each of these points from the tip of endoscope. If you are interested to learn more about that, you can refer to this article that has already been published on Journal of Voice. During the calibration, we created a model that would take working distance and radius of the circle in a pixel and would predict the millimeter length of that radius for us. So we can use that model for making measurement of any object that has one end on the center of the field of view. So let's say that we have, we have something that one end is on the center and we want to find its length. Basically, we find it's working distance using the vertical measurement method that we slightly talked about in the previous slide. Then from the image, we, we measure lengths of L in pixel, and then we fed these two information into the mo calibrated model. And that model will predict and estimate the lengths of L in millimeter. In previous slide, we saw how to measure lengths of an object in millimeter that one of its end is on the center of the field of view. But how about a general object? So here we, are, we have an object that neither of its end is on the center, and we want to estimate its length in millimeter. 
Using principle of geometry and law of cosine, we can create this OA beam a triangle. And uh, basically in this triangle, OA, which is equal to RA, it is an object or it is a it is a length that one of its end is on the circle. At the same time, OB or RB, uh, it is a length that one of its end is on the center of the image. So we can convert OA and OB into millimeter using the method that we talked about in previous slide. And then we can use this law of cosine for estimation of the length of L in millimeter. So in summary, in order to determine length of a general object, we determine the working distance using the laser information. We measure RA and RB from the image. We convert RA and RB into millimeter using the method that we talked about in previous slide. We estimate the value of angle of alpha using the image, and then we use law of cosine for estimation of the length of L in millimeter. We run a set of analysis to quantify accuracy of the method. So for radial measurements, we measure we computed the value of error, and then we ran two different correlations, one of them between error and length of the object, and one between error and working distance. So there was a very weak positive correlation between magnitude of error and radial length, and we found a very weak negative correlation between magnitude of error and working distance. Performance of the method for general measurement was evaluated using one-way ANOVA. We created four line segments with lengths of 5, 10, 15, and 20 millimeters. We placed them in different spatial locations of the field of view, and we changed working distances into 5, 10, 15, and 20 millimeters. So from each measurement, we found the value of error, and then we ran two sets of one-way ANOVA. So one, way, one of those one-way ANOVA investigated the effect of working distance on measurement error and what the other one affected the length of the object on measurement error. So none of these were significant. So we combine all of groups with each other and based on that result, the average value of air measurement error was on the order of 0.2 millimeter. In conclusion, Accuracy of the method does not depend significantly on the working distance. Accuracy of the method does not depend significantly on the size of the target object. The method was able to produce measurement with submillimeter accuracy, and the method was able to handle nonlinear distortion very effectively. If you are interested to learn more about nonlinear distortion and their effect, you can refer to our other presentation in this virtual venue. Funding for this research was provided with Michigan State University Foundation, CAPCST 2020 PhD Scholarship, and National Institute of Health. We would like to thank Dr. Hillman and Dr. Mehta for their discussion on the importance of nonlinear distortion in flexible endoscopy. Thank you very much for your kind attention.